Hello, everyone. This is criminal profiler Pat Brown. And yesterday I did a video uh, explaining why I thought the front lawn theory of the defense was rather ridiculous. And what I was tempted to do yesterday was explain how a person who, if this man committed the crime, right, Albert, that he would certainly not dump the body straight on his own front lawn, that he would have found a better way to deal with it. Uh, I got a lot of flack, of course, from people who 100% believe this is a big conspiracy. And I was accused of not knowing any details, not knowing any of the evidence, never having watched any of the trial. I just don't know what I'm talking about. But no, I do know what I'm talking about. I'm not saying that uh, we can't, shouldn't wait for the trial to finish, to find every shred of information that's going to be given by both the prosecution and the defense, whether we will find that, or the jury finds that Karen Reed is guilty or not guilty. Sure, we should we should all be cognizant of the fact that more may come out. This is true. However, what I said yesterday about the ludicrousness of this guy just dumping the body right on his front lawn, right in front of his house. So, hey, me, maybe it's me. It's, it's silly. Now, so then the question comes, why are they using this defense? And I want to get into that a little bit more. And I call it explaining away the evidence because the defense has a huge problem. What is the huge problem? The evidence that points to Karen Reed being involved. That's their problem. All right. If they didn't have that problem, they wouldn't need the defense they're using. But the first problem they have is that Karen Reed did drop her boyfriend off at that location. And there are no witnesses that says he went into the house. So all they have at this point is he was dropped off and he ends up dead on the lawn. So his body is there in the lawn. They must explain that. There's only two explanations. Well, there's three. I'm going to give you the third one. Uh, one is that Karen Reed hit him with a car and he ended up dying on the lawn. Or that Albert uh, dumped him there. The third one would be this could be this could be an accidental death kind of thing, something that nobody would get charged with. Let's say a John O'Keefe uh, actually went into the home, to the party. He walked in. He was hanging around, drinking way too much, and at some point he was so drunk he like stumbled down the basement stairs and fell and cracked his head and ripped up you know, whatever he cracked his head on the wall or whatever. And meanwhile, the dog was down there. So the dog came up and, and grabbed his arm and ca caused some damage to it. And, and he's like, Oh man, what happened to me? But he's still really drunk. So somehow he just staggers out of the house, manages to get partway across the lawn. Maybe he's confused. He thinks hey, maybe Karen's still out there with the car. Maybe he just doesn't know where he's going. Cause he's has a concussion at this point, or he's got bleeding in the brain. So he just staggers onto the front lawn and dies. All right. That would be an accidental death. Um, nobody would be to blame. But the defense can't go there. Why? Because they have to explain away the evidence that points to Karen Reed. Otherwise, they could just say, yeah, you know, she dropped him off. No biggie. Uh, he, he came out of the house and fell over. But they have a problem. He was never seen in the house. There's no witnesses that he was in the house. And there's a lot of evidence that points to Karen Reed. All right, so they have this problem. They're trying to defend her. They're trying to say she did not do it. And if she did not do it, and his, he did not, and, and, and John O'Keefe did not accidentally stagger out of the house and die, then somebody else had to murder him. Somebody else had to kill him and put him on the front lawn. They have to explain why the body's on the front lawn. So once they realize they're in that conundrum, how do they explain how his body got on the front lawn and how somebody else actually killed him? So now they have to take all the evidence that points to Karen Reed and try to explain it away. They have to say that the damage to the arm, since if he was never in the house, there was no, con <laughs> there was no confrontation with a dog dog did not attack him if he never was in the house. In theory, you could say the dog went out of the house and just grabbed at his arm. Um, I don't see there's any evidence of that either. Um, so if he never went in the house, there wasn't 
He wasn't attacked by a dog, but they have to explain away the arm. So they're using the dog. All right. So that's their explanation for that. Then we have another problem. Uh, well, let's see. The taillight problem. Because they did find pieces of taillight at the scene. Now, of course, people say, well, was, uh, first of all, police incompetence. They weren't the best police officers ever. They did some poor techniques of uh, handling the evidence. All right. I grant you that the circumstances weren't the best. People don't understand that in a smaller police department in the middle of a snowstorm, things just may not go as the way you wish, and you may have very little time to think. So, yes, were some cups barred from a neighbor to collect blood? Yes, but they were in a sealed bag, so it's not like they were contaminated. Then you can go into all the explanations for why this was badly done. Fine, the defense has every right to pull to say that, and I'm not going to say I disagree with all of it, um, because sometimes it's just unfortunate. And why didn't they find the broken tail pieces, uh, the tail the tail light pieces? I don't know. There's a storm. They were trying to save somebody's life. There's all kinds of reasons, which apparently, for people who think she's innocent, all the reasons are always on the side of the defense and not on the side of the prosecution. So, but there are reasons that things aren't as perfect as people would like to believe. Uh, because in real life, real life happens. And the circumstances were not great at the time this was happening because of the weather and just the, what they were dealing with. And they had um, emergency personnel trump, trump, trumping all over the scene. This often happens with cases. So yes, you want to have a pristine crime scene, but you're trying to save a guy's life. That's more important. That's the most important thing. And so when firefighters come in and EMTs come in and and there's sometimes it just completely mucks up the entire crime scene. That's a reality. Do you just say, oh, we're not going to even get near the crime scene because we, won't, we don't even want to check that guy. He might still be alive, but let's just stand back here until he dies. And then we'll, <laughs> we'll put up the yellow tape and then we'll go in. You can't do that because they didn't know if he was dead or not. So they had to do something. So yes, the crime scene wasn't the best condition one would wish. However, they did eventually find pieces of the, um, the tail, tail light. Um, and there was evidence that her tail light was broken. So now the defense has to explain away why her tail light is broken and the pieces are at the scene. They're, so how do they do that? They come up with some other scenario that she left the scene with a perfectly fine tail light and she backed into his car and, and if that's not good enough, they planted it. The police planted it because now they have to explain away that darn stuff. Now, they have a problem here because this this is, let me read the filing since people say I haven't read anything. and don't know anything about the case. Through trace analysis and forensic testing, the Massachusetts State Police Crime Laboratory discovered the victim's DNA present on the broken taillight and microscopic pieces of red and clear apparent plastic located in the victim's clothing. Comparison testing was conducted and the results demonstrate that the microscopic pieces of red and clear plastic are consistent with the broken pieces of plastic from the defendant's right taillight. This is really solid evidence. Now, of course, what the defense has to now say is that stuff was planted because the crime laboratory has come up with the fact that his DNA is at, is on those, is at the crime scene on the broken pieces and on top of that, those broken pieces are, some of them are in his clothing. That puts him and the car together. How do they explain that away? Must be corruption. Must totally be corruption. So now what they have is they have EMTs arriving and they don't hear her properly, even though she says, did I, I hit him or did I hit him? Whatever way you want to go with that. They are saying they're just not telling the truth. And then the police come and they do a bad job collecting evidence. And now evidence is planted and DNA is planted. <laughs> of course, also the, the arm thing, which I do not think looks like a dog attack. They, the defense claims it is. It's a tricky thing. You know, when you're looking at that kind of you know, damage, certain types of damage, it's very difficult to determine sometimes what it's from. Now, sometimes it's real obvious, but sometimes it's, it's, it's tricky. Uh, and that, that damage to his arm could come from pavement. It could, could come from some part of the car. It could come from uh, the broken glass. It could come from something underneath the car, like uh, ice that's sharp and hanging off. It could come from metal. I don't know. I, I haven't examined the whole car and the whole scene, so I don't know. But it doesn't look like dog dog attack to me. And they check for DNA, and there's no dog DNA on that part of his arm. So... 
the defense has to explain away why uh, John O'Keefe's body is on the lawn. They have to explain away why she was the last one to see him alive. They have to explain away why she said, I hit him, or did I hit him? Meaning that, why would you think you hit him? Except you actually feel like you might have hit him. They have to explain away the her broken taillight. They have to explain away his DNA on the broken taillight. They have to explain away the broken taillight in his clothing. They have to explain all those things away. How does the defense do that? They know that the, actually the prosecution case is very, very good. Not perfect, but very good. So now the defense has to come up with an entire theory. And the only thing they can come up with is something happened in the house that everybody's lying about. The damage was done in the house even though there's no sign that he was actually fighting anybody. Uh, and there's no proof that the dog actually attacked his arm, but Hey, make up a story that is a story. And then since he can't just stagger out and die on the lawn and that won't explain away her stuff, you've got to have him being a very clever son of a gun. And uh, well, he's not even being clever about it because he's dumping the body on his lawn, but he is, he is willing to do all of this to get out of the trouble he's in because he was the one who did and John O'Keefe. So now, Albert here is going out, dumping the body on the lawn, waiting for everybody to leave, mind you, and then somehow dumping the body on the lawn. And since he doesn't have access to plant anything, <laughs> he can't plant taillights. He can't smash up her taillight. He can't do anything. He's now got to get together somehow with the police department, the EMTs, the, <laughs> the, uh, the laboratory. And somehow he has so freaking much influence that they're all willing, everybody's willing, including the people in his house, which are some of them are just young people who are hanging out partying. Now all of them are gonna lie about him coming into the house and then they're gonna lie about him being, uh, his body being dumped on the lawn. And then the EMTs are gonna lie. And then the police are gonna plant the evidence, put the, and then the lab is gonna lie about the DNA. Everybody is involved. Now I'm sorry, but I don't buy this at all because I've worked enough cases, I've, I've analyzed enough cases to know how things really work in the real in the real world. Am I saying there's no police corruption? No, I'm not saying that. I've seen some corruption. I have spoken out against certain places where there have, has been corruption. I've, got, I've spoken out against police departments. However, the corruption is usually much more straightforward and not this convoluted mass amount of people to be involved in. That's not the way corruption usually works. So this story does, none of this holds water for me. I believe that the only reason they came, the defense came up with this big conspiracy theory is because I have to explain away the evidence that all points to Karen Reed. Now you can believe me or not that that makes sense, but you can wait for the rest of the trial and see what it all is presented. And, and that's, that's fine. And we'll see how it all plays out whether any more information comes up that would dissuade me from what I see here. Uh, and mind you, I just want to point this out before I go, just because one expert says something doesn't make it. So <laughs> there's when you go into a courtroom, you'll get an expert from the prosecution expert from the defense, and they will have absolutely opposing opinions on something like blood spatter pattern. And I look at that and I go, how the heck do you have exactly the opposite? who's being paid, who's being paid more <laughs> to say these things. So just because somebody somewhere said something doesn't make it true that they are accurate in what they're saying. Some expert, and you're gonna say, well, you're that expert, Pat. That's correct. I am an expert in profiling and crime scene analysis. You don't have to believe me. I can be wrong. And I'm also not testifying in court, all right? so. But when you have people testifying in court, it doesn't mean just because they're testifying that they are actually one, correct, because they can be wrong too, or two, they're not paid to say whatever because they're, some of them make a huge amount of money, especially from especially the defense experts. This is just a fact. They can get paid a huge amount of money to testify in court. Um, so just because you read something somewhere that Turtle Boy put out and says, oh, see, this proves this. It doesn't necessarily prove that. Stop believing everything Turtle Boy promotes and everything that the defense promotes. 
because that's what they're doing. They're trying to poison the jury before they get in there. And before they tried to poison them before the jury, before they got there, they did a great job. They went mass big, big time with social media and they've convinced many, many people that Karen Reed is 100% innocent before she ever went to court, before anybody ever was able to present a, a case. And I've been attacked because how dare you? The trial hasn't even proceeded, but there you are telling me I'm wrong and she's absolutely innocent. <laughs> yeah, come on now, that's hypocritical. All right, so yes, we're gonna have to wait to see what all comes out of this. But as an expert, I'm only giving an opinion. If you don't like my opinion, that is fine. Please go away from my channel, go someplace where people agree with you, that's fine. I also do, I don't have a problem with your comments if they're respectful and aren't just doing uh, the doing a whole defense diatribe. If you're gonna be respectful, have some questions or have some comments, this is fine. Once you start calling me a fraud and a has-been and, and an old crone <laughs> and tell me I'm an idiot and I'm, I don't know anything, yes, I will block you if I see your comment. A lot of times I don't have time to block everybody's comment, but yeah, I, I, don't, have to, I don't have to accept you being a bully and being rude in my own home, which is my channel. So again, I, I, there's people I do welcome to comment and I, I'm interested in thoughts and discussion, but polite discussion. And if you can't be polite, if you have to be bullying me and you have to be nasty toward me, you got problems, not me. <laughs> anyway, that's my thoughts on why I think the defense is trying to explain away evidence, okay? We'll see how it all plays out. But if you're new to the channel, please do like this video. If you don't like this video, please just go away. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to be, you know, to see, to be involved in all the many, many cases that I uh, that I analyze. I put out a case every week um, that I analyze. And um, if you want to learn about crime scene profiling, uh, if you want uh, crime scene analysis and criminal profiling, this is an educational channel. My idea is to teach people, help them understand. I'm not here to solve cases. I'm trying to help people get better at crime scene analysis and profiling, especially detectives or people who are going to go into detective work, um, police officers and so on. And that's my purpose for this channel. So please do subscribe if you'd like. Uh, click the uh, little bell thing so you can get notifications if I put something else out, uh, which I do at least two or three times a week. Uh, and um, let's see what the trial has more to say. And will I come back and say something again? It all depends whether I have something worthwhile saying. And um, I'm not a news channel. I just, I don't do that. Uh, I want to help people understand. And if you don't, if you, you know, that's all I'm here for. <laughs> that's all I have to say. See you later. Bye.